You got a good one right off the bat when you're fixing to cut. I think my bowl's out. I believe I gotta grab a jug. Got a little bit of gas in here, dude. That's the Husqvarna Combi Can. You can find it in my Amazon link. It automatically shuts off when the, when the tank gets full. So we're gonna cut that big gun. It's leaning back that way. We're gonna go that away with it. See the power box down there, machine down there. Already got a rope up in it. All the way up in the very tip top of it. We'll cut it with the uh, 500i. 25 inch bar, square ground chain on it.
out in here to the machine. Notice how delayed this limb is after the tree hits the ground. Bam. Bam. And that l limb is reaching a pretty good little piece back. You know, if you're standing right there, it, you know, it would get you. And uh, so always, uh, always keep that in mind uh, on those trees like that, especially if they got to go buy something. So a couple other things right here. You get asked all the time, why do I bore? Why do I bore? It's, it's simple, simple answer. You make your hinge first. You can make your hinge and then cut out the back and you're not standing there at the tree trying to make it or anything like that. Now your, your hinge thickness needs to be, it needs to be really close to 10% of the diameter of breast height, DVH. Uh, that is, uh, that's very important. If the hinge is thicker, it's going to, it's not going to work correctly. As a tree goes to try to pivot over, it's going to pull the fibers. And a lot of times that hinge is going to break before it's supposed to. The name of the game is to keep that hinge intact till the tree is either on the ground or right at the ground. So the other thing too is the reason why the hinge is so important. And you notice that tree, I didn't have a lot of room to the right because of that uh, transformer box down there. So I had to cheat it as much as I could just past that hickory tree. And that's what I kept doing when I was looking over the saw, I was aiming that tree and I kept moving the, I think I, I set the bar in it three times and I kept moving the, moving the saw just a little bit further around, a little bit further around where I was just barely going to brush that, that hickory right there. And so imagine the forces that are on that tree when it goes to go by that hickory. And it's, it's trying to, the tree is right here. The hick, this is the hickory. The tree's got to brush by that hickory with all the limbs on it. Can you imagine the forces that are trying to push that gum over and if you notice that that hinge never broke that hinge held like it's supposed to because say that thing say you cut the tree all the way off when it hits that then gain you know where the where the butt of the tree's gonna go there's there's no telling and so i cut them off up high like that a lot of times because it I means it's easier for me to cut them off and then so then i'll recut them because i'm gonna ground ground, ground all these stumps anyhow so it makes it easier for uh, for me to cut and then make one final cut 
at the bottom at the base to get it prepared to uh, to grind that thing off. But uh, if you don't cut a lot of trees, uh, the boring a tree is extremely safe if you do it right and the hinge works right. But you've got to have an open face notch. An open face notch is 70 degrees or greater and you can line up with the apex of your cut as long as it's 70 degrees or greater. If it's 70 degrees or less, that's called a common notch, then you need to get above your apex one to two inches. That way, when it when it pops that hinge, you've got a stump shot right there to keep that butt of that tree from, from coming off. Now, on this tree right here, I actually cut it, notched it from the top, and then my bottom cut coming up was angled kind of like a humboldt there a little bit coming up to give it a little bit more relief because the tree was going to pivot down that hill down there. So uh, keep in mind, remember that on uh, March the 25th from 10 to 2 here in Columbus, Mississippi at Biddy Sawworks, I will be doing a uh, chainsaw clinic there. It's going to kind of be an open house also, spring open house. Uh, everybody's invited. It's free to come. Uh, I'm going to have all my saws there. I'll have a, I'll have a 261, 362, 400, 500 and a 661 i'm gonna have some big wood there 661 i have a 36 inch bar on it and we can cut some cookies i can you know if you ever want to test drive a saw here's your opportunity to do it and to run a bunch of different saws so i'll just bring you in there throw some chats on you here in protection hard at and all that good stuff <clears throat> and you can make a you can cut a cookie or two like i said test drive a saw these opportunities don't have don't happen very often. Be a chance to answer, ask some questions, and it's going to be a good time. Jill will be there. Uh, we'll have my t-shirts and merchandise there. We'll be selling them, and there'll be a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Blake's gonna the owner of the store is gonna have uh, he's going to feed at lunchtime, and then he's got a lot of other stuff going on. There's going to be a rep from Steel and some other reps there too. He's got some Arbor stuff in the store, so uh, it's going to be a good time. So, uh, like I said, Biddy Saw Works right here in Columbus, Mississippi on Highway 69, right there in, in the town. So, uh, you can look them up online. They're on uh, Facebook, Instagram, everything. So, uh, we'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.